Our planet is facing the greatest extinction of animals since the time of the dinosaurs. But this time, it's not the meteorite that threatens their lives. It's a human being. Over the last 50 years, humans have destroyed almost two-thirds of species. You'll never hear the sweet Sardinian pika again. The orange frog will no longer warn you of the rain with its croaking. And Team Melodrama fans will not be able to tease the Tasmanian wolf at the zoo, calling him a striped Jacob. But unlike some animals, we've lived to see that we can work miracles with the help of genetic engineering. On the 23rd of February this year, a sensational event took place. Australian photographer Neil Waters posted stunning content on the internet, a picture of the very Tasmanian wolf that was considered to be extinct 85 years ago. It could mean that scientists have already secretly made progress in cloning, and we can fix it all. But there is another question. Is it worth doing it? Before you answer, there's someone I'd like you to meet. In order to do this, you need to raise your head up. This is Host's eagle, the largest bird of prey of historical era. Host's eagle is very similar to the world's largest eagle, the harpy eagle, only it was twice as heavy and its wingspan was 40% larger. It lived on New Zealand's South Island until people ruthlessly exterminated the majestic bird. Legends say after the Maori people exterminated the moa, the main source of food for host seagull, the mega bird began to take revenge on people hunting their young children. Therefore, the Maori people had to kill a terrifying bird. On the basis of an excuse of self-defense, the human being has become the most dangerous predator and killer of all time. But New Zealand kids play in the yard without fear of being dragged away by a giant bird. Perhaps you'd like to clone some other animal from the recently extinct ones. How do you like this guy? Giant short-faced bear. It's heavier than the modern rhinoceros, 50% bigger than the biggest polar bears, and as you can see, twice your height. To survive, it must eat at least 35 pounds of meat per day. That means at least one corgi. Now look who's standing on your right. Megalania is the largest land lizard known to science. It was as long as a two-story building and weighed as much as the heart of a blue whale. But neither it nor the ancient grizzly were able to escape from a human being. In the food chain, humans became their rivals, having destroyed everything that the bear and Megalania ate. It's quite possible that people just killed these predators when they met them. Do you think you wouldn't have done it? First, get to know them. But where are they? You won't see Megalania right away. No, it's not shy. It's just that lizard hunts in an ambush. It will instantly immobilize you by cutting the tendons with its razor-sharp teeth. Have you seen these videos of how to open chips properly by making a cut in the middle of the bag? No one even knows that Megalania has figured it all out a long time ago. It will immediately rip open your belly and start eating you alive. It's a pity that such a unique species has become extinct. But don't worry, at the end of the 90s, there was a lot of speculation that Megalania had been seen in Australia or New Guinea. Maybe it's still alive without any cloning. And here comes the short-faced bear. It has no trouble finding you because of its distinctive, super-sensitive nose. Look into its chaps. Its fangs are pointed in different directions, similar to a tiger. Unlike Megalania, a bear's lateral teeth will effectively cut not only your tendons, but also your bones. The extermination of such monsters was a necessity for the survival of ancient people. But what wrongs did the much-vaunted internet star, Tasmanian Wolf, do to us? Thylacine, as it's also called, became extinct in 1936, which means it was around when the camera was invented and we can see its real pictures. Don't be afraid to get closer to it. It's like a big cat with an interesting striped coloring. Look how lovely it yawns. 
its mouth opens at 90 degrees. It turns out that this striped cat isn't so harmless, and who knows what a human can expect from it. I bet you shouldn't put your finger in its mouth. In the year 2005, the Australian magazine The Bulletin offered 1.25 million Australian dollars reward to anyone who catches a live thylacine. And Neil Waters, president of Thylacine Evernos, can become a billionaire thanks to the photo of a whole family of thylacines, including a cub. Maybe the thylacine we found is the result of successful experiments by scientists in the field of cloning. And soon we'll be able to recover the other recently extinct animals I introduced you to. By the way, people who were the first to think about it are the scientists from the Lazarus Project of the University of New South Wales. They took tissue of a frog that had been dead and frozen since the 1970s. Scientists successfully implanted it into an egg of a closely related species of frogs. Although none of the embryos have survived more than a few days, this may be the first step towards turning Jurassic Park scenario into reality. Because I think we're forgetting the real heroes, the mega animals that went extinct a long time ago. And you haven't even heard of them or their superpowers. What would be really interesting to renew and place in the park with the resurgent ancient inhabitants is Helicoprion. This predatory fish is the least favorite Tooth Fairy's character. Its teeth had an unusual ability. They didn't fall out, but instead turned into a wheel on the lower jaw, similar to a pattern. With this deadly spiral, Helicoprion used to arrange Paleozoic Chainsaw Massacre. Watching Helicoprion through the glass of a large aquarium, one visitor of the park would be very interested in it. That would be Steven Spielberg. He would certainly be inspired to make the next Jaws with this character in the lead role. Unless, of course, Helicoprion gets beaten in this audition by Aquilolamna Milarkaye. It has much more chances, because on the 18th of March, scientists released the news about a preserved fossil of this Cretaceous shark found in the Gulf of Mexico. Its special feature, pectoral fins that resemble wings, and it resembles a funny stick ray trapped in the body of a ruthless shark. It would be interesting to keep other extinct animals at home instead of the park, because now it's very fashionable to have a mini piggy pet instead of a kitten. But what about Entelodont, the behemoth-sized cannibal boar? This pet is definitely not for the faint-hearted. With its eight-inch fangs, the lector pig was not averse to eating its own kind. If your dog is not doing its job well, you should know that robbers would surely fit the taste of Entelodont. Hopefully, it will spare the owner. It's amazing that the only thing that can save these super animals is cloning. For all their power, they've all failed to avoid extinction and extermination. All but one invincible creature. Honey Badger. Here it is, lying there, itching. The menace of the Wild Kingdom. Do you feel like stroking that cute badge? I wouldn't advise this. This guy's a real maniac. The honey badger is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the most fearless animal. Not only does it defend itself with its thick, elastic skin that's hard to bite through, it also gets into fights and scrapes first. The internet star honey badger Stoffel has more than once escaped from its enclosure. And no, it hasn't escaped into the wild, but went to beat other zoo animals. The honey badger is the crisp brown of the animal kingdom. Everyone probably has a friend like that who went rogue at a party and couldn't be stopped. Since honey badger is not a member of the fight club, there are no rules for it to fight. It uses forbidden techniques. It can viciously attack the face and eyes of its rival. Well, more specifically, its victim. Are you surprised at people who can easily chew popcorn grains? Honey badger's jaws are so strong that it can eat turtles with a shell. And even if it falls into the mouth of a predator, let's say into the trap of the fangs of a Tasmanian wolf at 90 degrees, it still can't swallow the honey badger because it's also very dodgy. Perhaps you can go to 
to Africa and see it up close. But it's not a fact that within the very first minutes of the meeting, it won't scratch your eyes out. You might be thinking how cool it would be if all the above-mentioned guys were as resilient as the honey badger and survived to this day. Well, scientists have been trying to clone the Tasmanian wolf since 1999. Three years later, its DNA was extracted, but it was found to be unusable. And after six years, scientists managed to make some of the genes of thylacine work in the mouse embryo. But none of the developing embryos have turned into a wolf. Then the scientists quietened down, and we could breathe a sigh of relief because we had the confidence that we couldn't get into its chaps, which opens like an electric meat grill. But suddenly, in 2021, these pictures of a Tasmanian wolf walking quietly through the woods of Tasmania, maybe the experiments got out of hand. And soon there will be photos of other extinct animals on the web who are walking near us now. We just don't notice them. What animal besides the Tasmanian wolf would you like to notice in your backyard? This is the character you met a few short minutes ago, the ancient short-faced bear. Its genome is well-preserved and can be restored in the future. The problem is finding a surrogate mother, as the closest relative weighs about 10 times less. There may be genomes of other ancient animals. Which one would you bring back to life? A cannibal pig? A chainsaw fish? A baby killer eagle? Why shouldn't human beings resurrect themselves? Neanderthal is the most viable option for cloning. There's even a matching surrogate species. That's us. However, the UN Declaration prohibits the cloning of humans, considering it unethical. Well, would you take responsibility for raising a Neanderthal? Do you still want to resurrect someone? Who? Write in the comments.